everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am reviewing a palette that I was not originally planning on reviewing, which is Pat McGrath's Mothership 10, I can't believe there's 10 of them now, Moonlit Seduction. It's the most recent Mothership palette. And I have to preface this by saying that I was not originally going to review this, but I have been thinking about it. And a couple of weeks ago, Hannah was in LA, Hannah Louise Poston. And we were talking about this palette and how we're both curious and we were like, you know what? Let's just both get it. Let's review it together. We have not discussed the palette, but we did purchase it separately. We've been testing it separately and we are each sharing our review today. So I will link Hannah's video below. I know most of you probably know her. She's an incredible YouTuber, content creator, and Hannah and I have very different um, makeup styles and tastes. I think aesthetically we have very similar tastes, but when it comes to application and how we use makeup, of course we have um, very unique sensibilities, I think, when it comes to our makeup approaches. So I'm really excited to see what she's going to say about the palette and how she's going to use it. So I will link her channel and her video below. As for me, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you will know that I'm a Pat McGrath lover. I have almost all of her Mothership palettes, I think at this point, all except for one, which is Midnight Sun. But I have all of them. I use her palettes frequently. I really enjoy the artistry, the textures. And I do think that Pat McGrath has obviously changed the game when it comes to makeup, both in artistry, like editorial, as well as with her products. I think when her Mothership palettes came on the makeup scene, there was not an eyeshadow palette at that price point with that level of luxury and that level of innovation in terms of textures and color stories. However, 2022 makeup is a totally different ball game. There are many different competitors at that price point now, and we have come to see a lot of innovation from indie beauty brands. So I think it's just a stiffer competition when it comes to releasing an eyeshadow palette at this point and what it really takes to impress consumers. So I have to admit that I was disappointed when I saw the original color story of Moonlit Seduction. I was really hoping that there would be a departure from the rosy color stories. I have Divine Rose 1, Divine Rose 2, and Utopian Dream, and while they are unique and different, they all lean into that rosy color story. So when I saw Moonlit Seduction, I was a little bit disappointed because I think I have a very specific idea of my dream palette from Pat McGrath, and for me, that would include like murky mustards, greens, um, minty greens, just something different, a departure from the rosy neutrals. And of course, Moonlit Seduction does lean into the rosy tones. However, I have found in swatching the palette and playing with it over the last few weeks since I've received it, that it does surprise me in certain ways. And there are pros and cons but I am glad ultimately that I have my hands on this palette because it has surprised me in more ways than one. So in my review of the palette, I'm going to share swatches. I will also do comparisons with other palettes and swatches with similar shades and other palettes in case you also have those palettes and you're trying to debate this purchase. I'm also going to create five different eye looks, including the one that I'm wearing, so you can see the versatility of this palette, and I will also share my final thoughts. So I'm gonna have everything timestamped below. Don't worry, I know that's a lot of information to pack into one video, but of course these palettes are 120 five or twenty nine dollars they're very expensive so i know that this is a purchase that people are going to weigh very carefully and i would like to give you all of the information that i can so let's get into palette details the mothership 10 moonlit seduction comes in the same packaging as all of the other mothership palettes so if you're not familiar there's like a cardboard outer packaging each palette has a unique color story this is the one for moonlit seduction it's rosy pinky mauvey and gold and you open up the um, ribbon that wraps around here and you have the inner packaging, which is the palette itself. I know a lot of people um, really dislike the outer cardboard packaging. 
I am a bit of a collector when it comes to Pat McGrath, even though I'm not a collector um, in this way when it comes to a lot of other makeup. I have a hard time letting go of these, so I do store all of my palettes in their respective cardboard cases. But I admit that they are bulky and they take up an entire section of my makeup storage, so it's not convenient. But nothing about Pat McGrath makeup is necessarily meant to be convenient. It's all about excess, you know? And so that's part of the maximalism, I think, of the brand. So then you get the hard shell, um, palette and if you haven't held one of these they're very weighty and you have the gold embossing there's like little letters here i actually have not taken off the protective sticker so we can do that together very satisfying and then the backing is gold and this is the inside oh my god i almost just dropped it this is the inside of the palette. So you get a huge mirror. It's a beveled edge mirror and you get the 10 pans inside. So this is what the palette looks like. I swatched all of the shades from left to right, top to bottom in the palette. And so the shades are Skin Tense Glow, a pink champagne, Rosewood Romantique, a rosewood, Platinum Dusk, a platinum taupe, VR Sextasy, which is described as Gemini Blue, Astral Gold Lust, a Sparkle Golden Beige, Extreme Nocturne, Brown Taupe, Bronze Devotion, a Natural Bronze, Plum Cabaret, a Dirty Plum, Blitz Venus, Beige Champagne, and Astral Lilac Aura, which is an Astral White Lavender. So right off the bat, I can tell you that my first impressions of this palette were that it's much more neutral and cool toned and much more mauve and purple leaning than I actually anticipated when I first saw the images of this palette. I think these shades look very different on the skin than they do photographed and even in the pan. You can really see that with the shade Platinum Dusk, I think. So Platinum Dusk is this shade right here. And in the pan, it just kind of looks like a metallic taupe, but actually on the skin, when you swatch it, it's super creamy. It almost feels like a cream eyeshadow and it just has so much complexity in the shade. And look at that, it just blends out and it has so much stretch to the formula. It looks almost like a liquid eyeshadow. There's so much complexity here because you have this really beautiful deep base, but then you have this silver flash that creates this gorgeous like platinum pewter taupe sort of shade. So that's an example of a shade in this palette that looks so different on the skin than it does in the pan. In the pan, it's just kind of this seemingly innocuous taupey shade. It's actually what I'm wearing in the outer corner along with a bunch of other shades. You'll see me create this whole eyeshadow look, but I just wanna show you that as an example of one of the ways that this palette has surprised me. So in addition to the Platinum Dusk shade, the um, Skin Tense Glow and Bronze Devotion are the other two metallics in this eyeshadow palette. And these are just kind of straight up creamy metallics. So that is Skin Tense Glow, which flashes a much more silvery than it appears in the pan. That is Platinum Dusk. And this is Bronze Devotion, which is like a coppery bronze. For the mattes, there are three different shades. They are all extremely pigmented and they all blend out really beautifully. If you're not familiar with the Pat McGrath matte formula, it's on the drier side, I would say, especially compared to some of the other matte formulas out there like Natasha Denona, they're kind of opposites on the spectrum of texture. So these are more powdery, but they're also very smooth. And even though they're drier in the pan, they actually blend out really nicely. So this is Extreme Nocturne. The middle is Rosewood Taupe. And at the end is Plum Cabaret. So let's talk about the special shades. This is a huge departure from her past Mothership palettes. In the past, her Mothership palettes have all had four shades at the end that are baked eyeshadows. So these six shades on the 
left side of the palette have always been pressed shadows, but these last four shades have always been baked shadows. And in this palette, that is not the case. In this palette, these four shadows are not baked. They are actually pressed pigment eyeshadows. They are creamy and they have a very emollient texture to them. And they do contain a lot of micro glitters. One of them is a duochrome. There is something kind of unique about each of the shades, but they are a departure from the formula of the previous special shades, and you can tell the difference. So VR Sextasy is the duochrome here. It is a blue shift on top of a purple shade, and it is uh, flaky. You can even see as I'm picking it up, there's like a flakiness to it. And that is similar to the past special shades, but the past special shades are flaky in this very like twinkly twilight kind of way. Whereas this shadow is flaky in a dense, creamy, emollient kind of way. So I'm gonna swatch that for you. You can really see the density, I think, of the eyeshadow. And of course, like it's beautiful, it's stunning. It's just different. It's different from her past formulas. Same thing with Astral Gold Lust. You can see it picks up in flakes on the top of the pan, and it has a very similar feeling to VR Sextasy. There's that emollient quality to it. This shade Blitz Venus is a little bit different. There seems to be a lot more oil in this one. It honestly picks up like um, a Victoria Beckham Beauty lid luster, almost like those oily pressed pigments. So that's a swatch of it here. There's a lot of shine, a lot of body. It's like a very neutral pink with both silver and gold micro glitters. And I forgot to mention Astral Gold Lust. It's a warm gold, but there's actually silver glitter in it. So it swatches a little bit more neutral than you'd expect based on how it looks in the pan. Astral Lilac Aura has a very similar formula to VR Sextasy and Astral Gold Lust. So these are all that flaky emollient texture. And I'll swatch that right there so you can see. It's a very cool toned silvery lilac. I just pulled all of my motherships, so I'm going to give you some comparisons. I think it makes the most sense to compare Moonlit Seduction to the other rosy palettes, so I pulled those out first. So I'm gonna go in reverse order. This is Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction, which I'm reviewing. This is the last Mothership, which is Mothership 9, Utopian Dream. Overall, I think Utopian Dream runs a lot brighter and a lot warmer. So it's actually very different from Mothership 10. You can see that the tones that really pop in here are this lavender, this bright coral, and there are a lot of warm bronzes and neutrals in here. Then I have Divine Rose 2, and I think compared to Moonlit Seduction, Divine Rose 2 still runs a lot brighter and a lot more richly pigmented, whereas Moonlit Seduction has a bit more of an earthiness and a smokiness to it. I actually think that in terms of an overall color story, Moonlit Seduction is the most similar to Divine Rose 1. They both have an earthiness, they both have um, this kind of muted quality to the shades while still having these like fun pops of color. The astral shades are the most different in terms of these two palettes, but in terms of the other eyeshadows, the bottom six here and the top six here, there's kind of this shared murky rose quality to them. So this is the Rosewood Matte in Moonlit Seduction. This is the Lavender Matte in Divine Rose 1. This is the mid-tone peachy matte in Divine Rose 2. And this is the mauve shade, I guess I would say, in Utopian Dream. And you can see these all serve the same purpose of being one of the grounding matte shades in the palette, but they're all very different, actually. They have cool undertones as well as purple undertones and rosy undertones, and when you swatch them next to each other, they're actually very, very different. Then I'm going to swatch Bronze Devotion from Mothership 10. This is a bronze with a bit of copper in it. It's 
almost like a penny copper sort of shade. I'll swatch that beside the bronze in Divine Rose 1. The bronze in Divine Rose 1 is a lot less orange, a little bit more of a yellow undertone bronze. Then I'm going to go into this bronzy shade from Divine Rose 2. This is much more of a red undertone. It almost has a ruby garnet-like quality to it, and this one actually has um, gold micro glitters running through it. And then lastly, I'll swatch the bronze in Utopian Dream. So this is also a coppery bronze, but it leans a lot more red. It's a lot closer actually to this shade. This shade also has some hot pink glitter running through it, and this has some gold glitter running through it. But none of them look exactly like this one. I of course have to compare the duochrome formula in this and Utopian Dream and Divine Rose 2. So Pat McGrath has only done three duochrome or, or multi-chrome shades. This is more of a duochrome. So that is VR Sextasy. You've already seen this. It's beautiful, it's very shiny. So this is the multi-chrome in Utopian Dream and it's a very different kind of shade. It has like a green red quality to it. And I actually think this one was a pressed pigment too. So you can see they have a really different kind of quality. The um, VR Sextasy has a duochrome glitter, whereas this one is smoother. The duochrome doesn't come from a glittery flash, but it's actually like in the formula itself. The Utopian Dream Multichrome is most similar to the Divine Rose 2 Multichrome. So this is an example of one of the special shades that is baked. You can tell there's a difference in the firmness and the texture of the eyeshadow itself. It does not feel like a pressed eyeshadow. You can see how similar the duochromes are in Divine Rose 1 and Utopian Dream. Totally different from this kind of duochrome. I also want to show you the difference between the astral shade in Moonlit Seduction and the original baked astral shades in the previous Mothership palettes. So this one is called Astral Lilac Aura. So this does, as I mentioned, have a flaky quality to it. It's a beautiful shade. It's like a white lilac. Let's compare that to the astral shade in Utopian Dream. You can see the surface of the eyeshadow palette is flaky and the flakes are almost like weightless. Like you can blow on them and they'll disappear into the air like fairy dust. Whereas the flakes in Moonlit Seduction are much more dense, much more emollient, and they just give off a different kind of finish. So let me swatch the original baked astral shadow here. It's much drier in formula. You can actually feel the texture on the hand, but there's something about the baked quality of the original astral shades that I just think creates a much more crystally sparkle that looks more expensive. It reflects a lot more shine than the pressed formula. The pressed formula is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but when you see it, especially in person next to these astral shades, there's just something undeniably special about the astral shades, the original baked astral shades. So those are the motherships that I think share the most crossover with Mothership 10. Of course, all Pat McGrath palettes have a similar DNA. There's always like a deep dark brown or a black. There's always a skin show nude. There's always these astral shades but in terms of undertones and color stories, I think those are the ones that are probably the most similar to Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction. Now I'm gonna show you five different eye looks, including the one that I'm wearing today. Overall, I just want you to get a really good sense of the mood that the palette creates and the different kinds of looks that can come out of this palette. Okay, so let's get into the eyeshadow looks. For the purposes of testing and being able to show you as many looks as possible, I'm not going to finish each eye look with eyeliner and mascara. I'm actually going to do different looks on each eye so I can show you maybe 
four or five different ways of creating eye looks with this palette. I currently have foundation and concealer on. I powdered a little bit. My brows are done and I have eyeshadow primer on, but I don't have any cheek products or lip products on. I just wanted the color focus to really be on the eyes. I know everyone is curious about the special shades, so I thought I would start the first look with VR Sextasy, which is the duochrome shade right here. So taking that shade on my finger, I'm just going to spread that across the eye and just, I'm just being kind of messy with it. I just want to get it all over the lid. I am getting a good amount of fallout with this shade. It's really pretty. You can see the blue shift and that purple base for sure. I'm trying to whisk away this fallout, but I think these micro glitters are pretty stuck on the cheek. They're really like, <laughs> they're on there. That's okay. It's to be expected with a textured eyeshadow. I'm going in with a small brush. This is the Real Techniques 307. And I just wanna build up this shade with a brush and see how it behaves, both with a finger and a brush. You can see that deposited a good amount of color. You can also go in with a wet um, brush or just spray your brush a little bit with a setting mist, but I pretty much never do that. <laughs> I'm just lazy. Honestly, this could be a one and done eyeshadow because it has the deeper base with the lighter iridescence. It actually has a lot of dimension, but I am going to add a little bit more definition. I'm going to take a really small brush. This is the Esam W19 into the deep plum purpley shade. This is called Plum Cabaret. And I'm just going to add some of that shade to the outer corner. This shade actually really matches the base shade of VR Sextasy. That really did not take a lot. It's very pigmented. Even on top of this duochrome, it's blending out really nicely. I'm gonna bring that shade along the lower lash line as well and just connect that outer corner right there. Going to take that same small dense brush and I think I'm going to go into this glittery shade. What is this called? Um, Astral Lilac Aura. And I'm just going to lightly press that into the inner corner to bring some light and blend it into the first shade we put down. Those are really pretty together. I think there's um, a really nice harmony between that really light, almost silver lilac blending into the um, duochrome of VR Sextasy. I think I'm gonna stop here with this eye look, but obviously it's very fun. You can see all of the lavender, lilac, purple, iridescent shades come through and they really play well together. It looks like they're all kind of melded and almost wet across the eye with the definition coming through in the outer corner. Next, I'm actually gonna start out with a matte shade. So I'm gonna go into Rosewood Romantique with a big fluffy brush. And this is the Isam V34. I like to start out with a really light hand with Pat McGrath matte shades and I'm just going to create a little bit of definition across the socket line. Then I'm going to take a clean finger into the shade Blitz Venus, which is that rose gold, rosy champagne sort of shade, and this picks up a lot of product. You can see it's already coated my finger. It's very wet, very creamy, almost feels like a cream. I am actually going to take off a little bit of that shadow because it picked up so much product that I'm worried about it um, dropping on my face. So I'm actually gonna like work it into the back of my hand and then blend out across the eye. This looks really nice with the rosewood shade. I'm actually just kind of blending them into each other and really layering on top of the rosewood shade. Then I'm taking my Esam, um V27, it's just a small dense brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that shade. I'm kind of surprised to say this, but I actually am liking the way these build up a little bit better with a brush than with my fingers. I just am finding that there's a lot less fallout with a brush 
The micro glitters here are silver and gold, so it creates a really soft, rosy sheen without being overly warm or overly silvery. Going to take my Refer 14, which is a very small round brush, and I'm going to go into the deep shade, which is Extreme Nocturne, and I'm just kind of using a padding motion just to deepen up that edge. I'm using the same brush and I'm gonna go into Rosewood, actually, the um, Rosewood Romantique, and just bring that along the lower lash line. This brush is so good for smoking out the lower lash line. It just does the work so quickly and it's so soft. Extreme Nocturne really cooled down this eye look. It's almost like a granite deep brown. Then I'm going to take a Refer um, O2, which is just a flat shader brush, and I'm gonna go into Skin Tense Glow. And I'm going to highlight the inner corner right here. And I'm going to highlight the brow bone as well. She always does a skin tense shade. This one looks a lot cooler toned on my skin tone, a lot more pearly than um, past iterations of this shade. This gives you that very like lunar, pearly, moonlight kind of look. So these are the first two looks. I'm going to take these off so we can do two more looks. Okay, I'm back for the next looks. I have to say removing those eyeshadows without a cleansing oil was a bit of a challenge because the special shades are so emollient and I was using um, a reusable cotton round with micellar water and I found that the micellar water wasn't um, quite strong enough to almost like penetrate the oiliness and the creaminess in this formula. So it took me a little bit of rubbing. If it were um, just a regular makeup wearing day, I would go in with a cleansing oil and that would obviously break things down much more quickly. For the next two looks, I think I'm gonna lean a little bit more into the neutrals, the golds, and the pewter shades in this palette. So I'm gonna take my Esam W23, just a flat shader brush into the shade Platinum Dusk. I'm just going to build this up slowly with a brush. This shade reminds me a lot of Victoria Beckham Beauty Mink, her Lid Luster. It has a similar smokiness to it with that silver glitter, silver micro glitter running through and it's just a really easy but complex smoky eye. I feel like this might look not quite as cool toned on different skin tones. For me, it does pull quite, quite gray, like a granite. I actually kind of like this just as a sort of, not super graphic, but slightly graphic wing. I'm going to take this really teeny tiny angled brush, it's the definer brush from Real Techniques, into Extreme Nocturne. I'm using this almost like an eyeliner and just stamping across the lash line to create a lot of depth. And then I guess this is turning into a little bit of a smoky wing. I actually love the simplicity of this eye look. I feel like I was able to create something really dramatic and that like cat eye shape very quickly with just those two shades. So I think I might leave it there. Let's go for something a little bit warmer next. I'm going to go back into the rosewood shade. I wanna create a bit of a rounder shape, so I'm leaving this section of the eye open and I'm bringing the blend a little bit closer toward the front of the brow and towards the nose. See how different that looks when you're elongating the eye versus making the eye look a little bit rounder. I'm going to take a dense flat brush. This is the Real Techniques 321. And I'm going to go into Bronze Devotion, which is a creamy metallic. This is definitely one of the warmest shades in the palette. It has um, a slight copper quality to it. It's like a coppery bronze. There are no um, micro glitters in this shade, so you just get that really smooth, soft sheen. I want a little bit more of that rosewood to come through, so I'm gonna deepen that shade. These two shades complement each other really well. There's almost this antique quality to that rosewood, it's like a deeper rosewood and this sort of antique coppery bronze. Then I'm going to go into Astral Gold Lust and instead of taking this all over the eye, I think I'm just going to take my finger into it and just tap it across the center of the eye. 
I'm not sweeping it all the way across. I just want to add a little bit of light across the center of the eye. It's not fully a halo eye, but it's something like that. I think just that little bit of sparkle above the pupil opens up the eye and makes it look a lot rounder. I'm gonna sweep the rosewood shade across the lower lash line and do the same thing. Add just a little bit of gold along the lower lash line. So that's this look. It's more of like an antique burnished, coppery sort of look. And you can see how different of a mood <laughs> these two eye looks are, but they do come from the same palette. My eyes are starting to get a little sensitive, so this is going to be the last look I do, and I'm gonna do the same look on both eyes. But I thought this might be a good way to test out the Intensifies Artistry Wand. So this is not new, but I think she released this when they came out with the Hutopian Dream palette. But basically this is um, a stick wand product that is essentially an eye primer, but more than that, I think it's supposed to intensify the pigment of her eyeshadows. And I have not used this yet. I've been waiting to try it out on camera. It's a clear stick in there and it's a click pen. I'm going to swatch the same shadow on one side with the artistry pen and on one side without. So I have VR Sex to See and this is without the primer. And right here, is with the primer. I definitely feel like this looks almost more like a cream, whereas this looks like a powder foiled eyeshadow. The base creates, um, yeah, this just kind of creamy canvas for an eyeshadow like this to blend on top of. So for my final eye look, I'm going to take a fluffy brush, this is the Fit Glow Beauty double-ended brush, but the fluffy side, into Rosewood Romantique again, and I'm just going to lightly sculpt the eye. Then I'm gonna take the Refer 14 brush into the um, Plum Cabaret shade and just deepen up the outer corner bringing Rosewood Romantique on the lower lash line as well. Then I'm going to take the Artistry Wand, and I actually really like that it's triangular because it helps you get in that inner corner with that point. So I'm just gonna go all over the lid and swipe that onto the eye. I'm gonna use my uh, Real Techniques 307 that I used for the very first eye look in VR Sextasy, and I'm going to place that just in the center of the eye. I do feel like I'm getting less fallout having used the Artistry Wand because it does create a semi sticky base. I'm going to take that same brush into Platinum Dusk and I'm going to pat that into the outer corner. I kind of like these two shades brushing up against each other. Just creates a little bit of something kind of cosmic, a little mysterious. And then I'm gonna take a teeny tiny brush, this is the Refer um, 03, into Blitz Venus, which is that rosy champagne, and I'm going to add that to the inner portion of the lid just to create um, a sort of light to deep gradient. I dipped back into Cabaret Plum just to touch up that outer corner. And for some final pizzazz, I'm going to take that same Refer 03 into Astral Lilac Aura, this shade here, and just add a tiny bit of sparkle to the inner corner, just keeping it super focused, like right here. And I'll bring it on the inner tear duct as well. So this is the final look. It's very much like an oil slick, galaxy sort of eye. I just wanted to pile on all of the shades I could onto this eye look because it is the final one. So I'm going to apply some mascara, finish off this look, and I will come back to wrap up the review.
All right, I'm back. Let's talk about my final thoughts about the palette, including my sort of unfiltered thoughts. So performance wise, I really can't fault the palette. I'm not surprised because obviously I'm quite familiar with Pat McGrath's formula. I know how to work with the different textures and they all work beautifully. I think there's a reason why Pat McGrath palettes have the reputation they do. They not only give you a very luxurious experience, but they also deliver really beautiful eye looks from everyday wearable looks to more creative, adventurous, editorial, evening, night out kind of looks. In terms of color story, this palette really did surprise me because it leans much cooler toned, more mauve, neutral, smoky than I expected. And I do think it is well named in terms of the moonlit quality of these shades. Even though I'm not someone that wears a lot of cool tones, the bits of warmth that pop through the rosewood shade and the gold shades, that is enough to ground the cooler toned looks. And lately I have been leaning a little bit more into cool tones. So I think in terms of timing, in terms of season going into fall and winter, this is a really beautiful color story and it's not ashy cool tones. They're actually complex and interesting and very sophisticated cool tones. I do wish that, um, the mattes were a little bit different from each other, specifically the rosewood shade and the plum shade. Even though rosewood has more of a warm undertone and plum is a little bit more purple, on the eye, I don't think they're differentiated enough. They're both that like mid-tone depth. So I would have loved to see a slightly different shade variation between these two mattes. That's me being picky, but I think if there had been a different kind of matte color not in the rose family, it would have added another dimension to this palette that would have prevented it from feeling overly rosy, which was the major critique of this palette based on initial reactions. I did notice that I had a ton of fallout especially using the new pressed astral shades. And I think it's because the glitters are housed in such a dense formula that once you get fallout, it sort of seems to stick to the skin. And it's not that past astral shades don't have fallout, they do. But I find that they're a little bit easier to work with because they're so light weight and they're not housed in a more emollient formula so they're easier to sort of whisk away or take a brush and just sort of like pick it up and they also stick to the eye when you use a finger a little bit better because they're so light that the second you touch them to the eye or to an eye primer or to your skin even just the warmth of your skin it seems to hold on to that really light flake uh, of glitter. Whereas something with a heavier texture, it's more prone to drop because there's more weight in the formula. So that is just my speculation of the new astral pressed formulas. And I didn't love that. I found that actually using a brush with the astral formulas leads to a better overall look with less risk of fallout. And I would for sure say, if you're going to go for a dramatic glittery look, do your eyes first with this palette. And I have not felt that way with other Pat McGrath palettes in the past. My unfiltered and totally honest review of the non-baked astral shades is where the hell are the original astral shades? I'm really sad and I hope that this is not a trend moving forward in the Mothership palettes because the astral shades and the special shades are why people buy Mothership palettes. I can't tell you how many people have DM'd me, commented, had conversations with me throughout the years saying that, you know, I'm dying to try the special shades and that's why I'm saving up for a Mothership palette. Or I wish I could have the astral shades separately because they sound so incredible and I'm really curious about the texture. So without that main attraction being in the Mothership palette, in the Mothership 10 palette, I have a hard time justifying the price point when the textures are not what they used to be. 
I also think that it's potentially a cost thing. I assume that the baked shades, this is um, Divine Rose 2, the baked shades are probably more expensive to create because they require a different technique and a different way and perhaps more time to create each pan, whereas the pressed astral shades may not require that same time or labor. So while I am pleasantly surprised by this color story and how romantic and soft and um, almost vintage it feels, I, I just can't justify the price point personally. And if I had spent the money as a consumer, not as a beauty reviewer, I think I would feel really sad to realize that the astral shades were not the same as in the past palettes. Of course, it is still a beautiful palette. And if there had not been the precedent of astral shades, the baked astral shades, I think I would look at this palette and say, wow, this is so beautiful. It creates a really romantic, soft feel. I'm surprised that it makes cool tones actually wearable for my skin tone. And I think it is really thoughtfully formulated to look different from the other palettes that have come before it, even though it may not obviously seem so just based on looking at the pans alone. But ultimately the precedent is there and I think if people are buying this palette hoping for the same Pat McGrath experience, it's not the same experience. It's a different experience and it's still a beautiful experience. It's still very wearable. I think if you are looking for a wearable Pat McGrath formula or color story, you'll be really happy with this. Um, it's just not exactly the same. So that is the huge qualifier to what is otherwise a very positive review. And, but it's a qualifier that I just, I can't look past. I look at this palette and I think I feel the void. I see the void and I just think, oh, what if these shades had been the original baked formula? Like, wouldn't that palette be even better? if that were the case. Okay, I'm extremely heated. I need to calm down. I have a couple of final minor notes. I think the deep matte shades are getting better in terms of formula and the ease of blend because even a few palettes ago, for example, in Mothership 5, Bronze Seduction, which is my favorite Mothership, the deep brown in that palette can catch a little bit. It can be a little bit patchy. I have found that the deep browns in every palette after that just get better and smoother and silkier in terms of blend out. And that's one word that I can really use to describe the mattes. They're quite silky and elegant in their blend out. Same thing with the metallics. I think the metallics, the non-special shades, are getting creamier and even more shiny because of that creamy base and they blend out really, really beautifully. So I think that's it for me. I can't say for sure yet how often I will pick up this palette after the review period has ended. Of course, I've been using it these last couple of weeks, but will it have endurance in my makeup collection? TBD. There are some eye looks I'm really excited to recreate, like the Platinum Dusk Smoky Eye, which really surprises me, but I'm excited to recreate that. I'm excited to recreate this look, the oil spill kind of look and I'll just have to see how often I actually reach for this palette and if it shows up in the yearly roundup that I do at the end of the year. We'll see, TBD. If you have picked up this palette, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. And even if you haven't, I want to know what you think. What do you think about the change in formula? What do you think about the color story? What do you think about the future of Pat McGrath? I understand that Pat McGrath as a brand is now beholden to a much broader consumer base than they were when they were a smaller niche brand. I've kind of accepted that their most editorial color stories have probably already happened, which is why I actually picked up Motherships 1 through 3, because I think that's where a lot of experimentation happened in the brand. Now there's money to be made, right? They're in Sephora, people know who Pat McGrath is, what Pat McGrath is as a brand, and they're appealing to this mass market and neutral sell, you know? So I'm curious what the next version of the mothership will be, what the future of the brand looks like, what the formulas will look like, 
we'll see. But I am dying to know what you guys think because I just have a lot of mixed emotions about this palette. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope this was helpful. Again, check out Hannah's review linked below along with everything else that I used today. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.